Good morning, good morning. Welcome to our online church, Miracle Life Family Church. We're so gl glad that you've taken time to plug in either by Facebook or YouTube, whatever social media that you're using to connect with us. Now, Miracle Life Family Church, we believe in sharing Christ, maturing believers, and changing the world. Now, we meet every Sunday, uh, 08 hours for first service, and 10.30 for second service. So we have two services on a Sunday. So if you are in Lusaka and you want to fellowship with the church, we invite you just to connect with us at Miracle Life Family Church along Zambezi Road in Roma. Well, if, when you come to our church, you'll find a wonderful team from the parking lot into the auditorium, just helping you to make sure that you feel welcomed, valued, and as you feel uh, settled as you connect with us and worship God together. In the service, we'll have a, a worship team and then thereafter we'll have a powerful sermon preached by one of our pastors. This will be a great time for you now, if you're at home, just to get a Bible, get your notebook, get your family together if you have family, and be ready to hear the incorruptible word of God that is able to transform and change your life and my life. So just take time now and stay ready and let's worship God together. God bless you. Good morning, everybody. Shall we rise to our feet as we worship the Lord this morning?
let's just raise those hands and declare the goodness of the Lord in our lives. He's faithful. And there's no one like our God. Thank you, Jesus. There's no
looking for you are Jesus. Oh, just open your mouth and speak to the Lord right now. Oh, Jesus, we declare your goodness, Jesus. We declare Jesus. you work even when I don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when I don't see it you're working even when I don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop always raise your voice you never stop you never stop I don't see Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. chapter 1 verse 9 that Lord you are faithful for you have called us into your fellowship of your dear son our Lord. Church why don't we just lift up our hands and declare his faithfulness and how faithful the Lord has been. He's ever working he doesn't stop working. So Lord we thank you for your faithfulness. We give you praise. We lift your name O oh Lord for there is none who is like you none besides you none who is compared to you none who is an equal to you Lord, you reign forever. You reign forever, Lord. Your name is great and greatly to be praised. We praise you. We honor you. We glorify your name. We magnify your name. For there is none like you, O God. There is none besides you. None compared to you, O God. Oh, Father, we give you praise. You are faithful. Lord, indeed, you are faithful that your faithfulness, Lord, reigns from generation to generation. You have established the earth, and Lord, it stands. By your faithfulness, Lord, the heavens are established. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. We thank you, Father, that you cannot deny yourself that this is who you are. You are faithful. You are faithful. You continue to be faithful in our lives, Father. We give you praise, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that your works are perfect. Your works are perfect, Lord. And all your ways are just. Thank you, Father. This morning we declare that, Lord, great is your faithfulness. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Well, it's a good time for you to just turn around and greet three, four people. And thereafter you can take your seat. We want to take this moment to acknowledge our first-time guest. If you are visiting Miracle Life for the very first time, you've never been to our service, 
We just want to take this moment to see that you're here and acknowledge your presence and just say thank you for coming to worship with us. Our first time guest, just lift up your hands so we can see you are here. I see those hands at the back there. God bless you. I see these hands. Oh, I see those hands at the back. This side, I see those hands. God bless you. Welcome, 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 welcome. I see that hand at this side. God bless you. Just, just give me one, one other hand clap. All right. Now, our first time guest, if you didn't make a stop as you are coming into the auditorium uh, at the Welcome Center, we invite you at the end of the service just to make your way to the Welcome Center. Uh, it's located at the back in the foyer. There's also a pop-up banner written, first time guest. Uh, make your way there. There'll be a team just to welcome you and also to share with you what Miracle Life is all about. We believe in sharing Christ, maturing believers, and changing our world. Amen. Amen. On the wedding front, we have Francis Musonda, Wes Mutinta Kapalamlomo, on Saturday, tw uh, 20th April, at 11 hours in the chapel. May I ask Francis and Mutinta to stand to acknowledge your upcoming wedding. <laughs> there they are. Amen. So Francis and, and Mutinta, we pray God's blessings over your life. Amen. You may take your seats. This moment, I draw your attention to the screens for this morning's video announcements. Thereafter, we'll have offering. God bless you. Welcome to Miracle Life Family Church. These are your announcements for this week. Parks and Kalanga weds Gladys Luizzi on Saturday, 27th April at 10 hours in the chapel. We're excited to introduce our new traffic management system to ease the congestion on Zambezi Road during Sunday mornings. Here's what you need to know to make your commute smoother. If there's traffic buildup on Zambezi Road, our dedicated traffic team will be there to guide you. If you're coming from Foxdale Court, use the exit on the main gate to enter the church campus from the inner lane. For those in the outer lane from Foxdale Court, please use the entrance gate on the main gate to enter the church campus. If you're coming from Chamba Valley, you can also use the main gate exit to enter the campus. When leaving the church campus, everyone will use the east gate for exit. If you're being dropped off, kindly inform your driver to use the east gate for exit. And please make sure your payments for Yango, Ulendo, or taxi are ready upon entering the campus to prevent traffic buildup at the drop-off zone. Remember, it's crucial to follow the instructions provided by our traffic team for everyone's safety and convenience. Let's work together to keep the traffic flowing smoothly and to ensure a stress-free Sunday experience. For more information about what's happening at Miracle Life Family Church, be sure to refer to the bulletin tab on our mobile app, visit our website, and follow us on social media. Enjoy the service. Praise God. All right, the traffic announcement. Make sure we just obey the team outside when they're giving us instruction. In case you, not, uh, you didn't follow it very well, there'll be a team outside always guiding us and making sure that we are all safe and we exit the, and coming in also in and out of the campus uh, in a smooth way. So let's just obey and make sure that we follow the rules. Amen. 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 Praise God. Turn with me, it's the offering time, the ashes and the owls. If you need any assistance with the envelope, they'll be happy to assist you. Uh, and also, I want to make mention that we have other giving options. You can give our mobile money, MTN, Airtel, and Zamtel. Uh, and then you can also do a direct transfer into the account. There's also a secure giving booth at the back. You can use those channels. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 1 to 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 1 to 2, NLT. Now, considering your question about the money being collected for God's people in Jerusalem, 
you should follow the same procedure I gave to the churches in Galatia. On the first day of each week, you should each put aside a portion of the money you've earned. Don't wait until I get there, then try to collect it all at once. Wonderful scripture about preparation. Somebody said it so well, says the best time to, to prepare for an opportunity is to be ready for an opportunity. Now, giving is also like that. We, the Bible actually Paul's telling the, the church here, the Corinthians church, that prepare. Now, I know most of us, we only prepare for, a, let's say you are traveling. The only time we prepare for a passport is when there's a trip. All this time you're just watching and looking at life. But when they say there's a trip, they say, hey, my God, Mayo, I don't have a passport. You've missed the opportunity. But the best time to prepare for your giving is to prepare it in advance. So that when you come, you're already ready. When you are ready that way, you actually look forward for giving time. Because you are ready. You know, you, you, you come in to worship and, and, and honor God through your giving. Because your heart was ready. You prepared. And when you are prepared, actually this is where the Bible says in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 17, 77, it says, God loves a cheerful giver. Because you'll be cheerful. You'll be looking forward for your giving. Amen. So let's, this morning, let's, if you haven't prepared, you can prepare your heart right now and just ask God, help me and to, with my giving so that I give cheerfully and I honor your name with my giving. Amen. At this moment, let's pray as we give. Father, we give you praise. We give you honor. We thank you, Father, that you are God that reigns forever. And so, Lord, we thank you even as we come to a time to worship you with our giving. Lord, we thank you that, Lord, you said it in your word, that to honor the Lord with your possessions, with your wealth, then your bands will be full. Lord, thank you that uh, we can come before you just to honor your name through our giving. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Be blessed as you give. For my waking breath, for my daily breath, I depend on you, I depend on you for the sun to rise, for my sleep. Draw me close and teach me to abide. Oh, where the spirit bleeds as I follow in, I depend on you. I depend. I depend on you. You're the way, the truth, and the lie. You're the well that never runs dry. I'm the branch, and you are the vine. 
Draw me close and teach me to abide. Be my strength, my song in the night. Be my own, my treasure, my prize. I am yours forever, you're mine. Draw me close and teach me. Thank you, gentlemen. What a wonderful song, amen? And it's even more wonderful to abide with Jesus and to be connected to him. Last week, we saw a topic that Jesus is Lord. He is King of kings. He's Lord of lords. He's Lord over us. And let's look, let's look at some scriptures that say this so wonderfully and so plainly to us. Philippians 2 Verse 8, Philippians 2, verse 8, And being found in the appearance of a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. That is the response to one who is king. That is the response to one who is Lord. Every knee of those in heaven, those on earth, those under the earth, that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So he is Lord. So that's a, it's a word that we don't use that much. Somebody reminded me last week that if you're a lawyer and you go before the judge, then you say your lordship, Right? So, uh, you know, in, in countries like this, there, there, are, there are judges, there are lords, there's a high court, there's a supreme court, but there's a higher one. There's a lord of lords. There's a king of kings. And the word lord in the New Testament implies that, that inherent in the term are a number of things. Authority, dominion, the right to rule, the right to command, and the obligation to be believed, and to be obeyed. So that's who Jesus is. 
So he is the rightful ruler. He is the owner. So he is the one who commands us and has the right to have authority over us. Another way that we understand his lordship is the, is the phrase, he is the king over our life. Look at 1 Timothy 1.17. It says, now to the king eternal, immortal, inv- invisible to God who alone is wise, be honor and glory forever and ever. So he is a king in an entirely different class. All of these things, immortal, eternal, alone, wise, those, those are all attributes that only belong to him and belong to no one else. No authority, no might, no dominion, all right? 1 Timothy 6, 13, it says, In the sight of God, who gives life to everything, and of Christ Jesus, who, while testifying before Pontius Pilate, made the good confession, I charge you to keep this command without spot or blame, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which God will bring about in his own time. God, the blessed and only ruler, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, who alone is immortal, who lives in unapproachable light, whom no one has seen or can see, to him be honor and might forever. Meaning to him and no one else. He doesn't share that. With, with other rulers or with other authorities. So, I think we, if, we, if we kept reading, we could go on and on, but Jesus is Lord over us, so how does he exercise that authority? How do we understand his authority? How do we respond to that authority? In the in ages gone by, may have seen it in the movies, but you know, a king or a ruler would be over certain people, and if and if there was a decree from the king, then they would send out heralds, and they would have a, a scroll or a message from the king, and there'd be a trumpeter. Thus says the king, "Hear ye, hear ye!" And so you would hear it and realize that's from the king, and even though the king wasn't there. Looks like the king has spoken, so I better, I better hear ye, hear ye. So how does, how does Jesus do that? All right. How does he exercise his authority? Does, does he do it, do it through major prophets? I'm waiting for the guy to say I'm a minor prophet, but that way they would have too much ego to do that. No, how, do, how does he exercise his authority? Well, the king... The king of kings, the lord of lords, has issued decrees, commands, his ways, the way his kingdom operates, and we have it in his book. We have it in the word of God. So, to the degree that you and I follow the word of God and allow the word of God to be over our will, the opinion of others, the way of the world, to the degree that we allow that to be over us is to the degree that we are following his lordship. All right? You remember the, the time that where, where Jesus talked about there was a, a rich man and then there was Lazarus. They both died. One went to be with Abraham's bosom. The rich man died and went to hell. And... The rich man, formerly rich man, he was no longer a rich man. He was now a poor man suffering in hell. There's this discourse, and he said, send someone back to my brothers lest they come to this place of torment. And the response was, they have, they have Moses and the prophets. Now, that is a reference to the word of God. All right. So we have the way and the, the way that the king wants us to operate under his authority and it is written down. Look at, look at 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. And, and you'll see this is where, in this passage is where we say that, that the Bible, the word of God, scripture is inspired. All right. Now, you're going to hear this from a different translation. I believe a more accurate translation. Because when you and I hear the word inspired, 
we, 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 we think of a movie that inspired us, right? Or we, we think of, you know, Esther and Pompey singing together and they say, ah, oh, what an inspiration. Well, that, I agree, it is an inspiration, all right? And, or, or a poem, or the fact that the, the Zambian women's soccer team came back in extra time in Morocco. <clears throat> Love it, all right? You know, you know they are in, at, uh, at the Olympics, they're in the, the group that the ladies team from America is in also. So, my wife and I, are, we are on the record. We are wearing green and gold to support the ladies here for that match. Um, so, but let's hear what God says about his word. 2 Timothy 3, 14. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you've learned it and how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. So Paul, talking to Timothy, is referring to the Hebrew Bible, the old, what we call the Old Testament. So that's what Timothy had as scripture. And, and the purpose of the Old Testament is to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All right, so it, ha it has a purpose statement. Now, and then also describing scripture, verse 16, all scripture is breathed out by God. Perfect, I mean, it's such a great rendering. God breathed, breathed out by God. And so that's why the Bible is literally the word of God of God, all right? It's breathed out by God and it is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. So, is there anything that you and I are also aware of that was, the Bible claims, that was breathed out by God? Anything? You. The fact that you're alive. The fact that your heart is beating is because you were breathed out by God. Genesis 2, 7, then the Lord God formed the man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living creature. So, the very God that gave you life with his breath gave you the Bible with his breath. The authoritative word of the Lord, the authoritative word of the king of kings, and we have it today, all right? So it is not a collection of myths and fables. It is not ancient literature that is moral. There, there, are, there is some ancient literature that's moral, and this does contain morality, but it is the word of God. It is God's record of revelation to man. It is complete and it is understandable, all right? So since this word that comes from God, that means that it is, it is the single and only and final source of faith and life. Its contents stand above anything of human origin. Anything. Somebody, I remember growing up, and you know, we, we read the Bible that, that a fish, a big fish, swallowed Jonah. Jonah prayed, he was alive, and then he was uh, regurgitated onto the shore. And some people say, well, I, I, I can't believe that. Well, if it's in the word of God, I heard what somebody said, that if, if the, the word of God says that Jonah swallowed the fish, I'd believe it. If it's in the Bible. Amen. So it is word of God. So this is a super, super big deal. Now, what we see from the word of God, we see it played out in life, that 
the God, our creator, God, our Lord Jesus, has an enemy. It's our enemy. The enemy of our soul, Lucifer, Satan, the deceiver, the serpent in the garden. Now, if the king has given a a singular source of his authority to us, and you are his enemy, what would you fight? You'd fight his word. You'd fight us being able to access his word. If, if you know anything about history or world history or, and including church history, there was a time that's known as the dark ages. The dark ages. And the church, the, the predominant church of that day decided that the word of God should only be in Latin. Problem is, is only the leaders knew Latin. All of the people did not know Latin. So the word of God was not made available to the common man. Because the common man could have just opened up the Bible and said, you know what they're telling me? That's not true. They want me to give an offering to get my relatives out of purgatory. I can't find that. There's no purgatory. What are they talking about? See, they didn't want the people to know. So the people were in the dark. Thus, the dark ages. And so people that began to translate the Bible into vernacular, they were killed, strangled, and then their dead body burnt until it changed. And thank God, you and I have a Bible. There are There are Bibles in so many different languages of the world, including different languages in Zambia. More are being written. Our church helps pay for that, for the Bible to be translated. Aren't you glad? So, the enemy is continually attacking the word of God. All right? So, God gives us his word, and with that word is his authority. So, to the degree that we obey it, to the degree degree that we consider it our highest authority for everything of what it says is to the degree that we follow him as Lord. Okay? So, you can't say, well, you know, Pastor, I, I, I like Jesus. In fact, I love Jesus. I think he's really awesome. But, you know, I, I mean, this is an old book. This is a confusing book. And I, I love Jesus, but I'm going to still kind of do my life the way I see it. I'm just going to live my truth. Okay? There's no such thing as your truth. Hmm? That's like you living on your time. There is time. <laughs> it exists. You don't get to alter it. Listen to what Jesus said about that. Listen to what Jesus said in John 14, John 14, 23. Jesus answered and said to him, Jesus is talking to his disciples. He said, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. So you love Jesus? What's the fruit? You follow his word. You you obey his word. Now the opposite is true. Verse 24. He who does not love me does not keep my words. And the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. All right, so the, so the word of God is, is to be followed. All right, now the other thing that the Bible says is even though, the reason why we have books of the Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, is God chose, didn't have to, but he chose to use those people to speak through. All right, but they were not just coming up with ideas themselves. All right, look at second, look at second Peter verse one. Sorry, second Peter one verse twenty. Knowing this, first of all, that no prophecy of Scripture comes from someone's own interpretation. So it's not them just figuring it out, deciding for themselves. No. Verse 21, for no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, 
But men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. So this God breathing happened through the the writing on a scroll of people. But what, what was the source? The Holy Spirit, God himself. All right, so not open to private and tapish, not produced by the will of man, all right? So the authority of the Bible comes from the one who gave it, the one who authored it, okay? So this is God speaking to us. Now, so th- this is really clear. So what's the problem? Where do we get hung up? Where do we stumble over the word of God being authority over us? And I'd like to give you four observations. Some come from scripture, some come from my own life or or watching other people that there are, in a sense, other voices. There are other people and and sources of information that we, we go to instead of allowing God to have the first and the final say. All right, let's look at a few. First of all, one reason why someone would not allow the, the, the word of God to be authority over them is ignorance. Ignorance. You know, there's a saying today that uh, people say, when you know, you know. You know, that it didn't take a lot of thinking to put that phrase together, but it's true, right? But how I many you know the opposite is true? If you don't know, you don't know. All right. And there are times where people, they, they do love Jesus, but they don't know, or they, or they don't understand, or, or they misunderstand. But here's what the Bible teaches us. God expects you to know. If he put it in the book, he expects you to have read it. He expects you to have understood it. That is your responsibility. All right, look at this example, Matthew 19. Matthew 19, verse three. The Pharisees came to him, Jesus, and tested him. So they they weren't really being sincere. They were just messing with him. They tested him saying, is it lawful to divorce one's wife for any cause? Now these were people who had the Hebrew Bible. These were people who, who had access to that. Notice Jesus' response. He answered and said, have you not read? Read what? The transcript from Oprah's show about divorce? No, 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 no. She's not authoritative. Huh? Some talking people on TV just blah, blah, blah about guys and life and whatever. All right? No. Have you not read from from God's book, from from what the king has issued. Have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female? So he is is quoting from Genesis and he goes on to quote more from Genesis one and two in in that discourse. Four different times in the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus responded to someone's question with this. Have you not read? Have you not read? I believe his response to our ignorance is, have you not read? Meaning, you're supposed to have read. You have to be aware. You have to be knowledgeable. So that means you need a Bible. You need a Bible that you can read. You need to be in a church like this one that teaches from the Bible. Thank God there are many that do, and there are some that do not, all right? They, they teach you to pray to the God of your papa. Whereas this book teaches us to, that we bow our knee to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. There is one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. So, so. If, if you ever leave Miracle Life or if you ever move to another city or whatever, go to a church that has a high regard for the word of God, for all of the word of God, amen? You need to study it. 
We've got incredible tools that are available to us in 2024 that will help you understand the Bible. We've got a bookshop. There's a Rhema Bible Training Center. There's School for Life. There's so many different ways that God has, has given to us today, but, but you have to be hungry. You have to have a heart for the word of God. All right? So let me give you an example of where ignorance could really hurt you and, and then you could live your life outside of God's authority based on ignorance. So let's say we, we take somebody who's, say, 17 years old, young lady who, who loves Jesus, you know, born in a, in a Christian home, and she becomes pregnant, age 17, not married. So her friends, sometimes even her parents, others will say, just have an abortion. Just, just let them clean the cells out of you. She may go to a, a clinic here in town funded by American taxpayer money. It infuriates me. It's my tax money spreading lies and falsehoods. And they'll say, yes, we'll, we'll take care of the mass. They never call it a baby. It's a human baby with a beating heart that's inside of you. Now, what is, is, has God been, has he been on the record of that? Yes, he's been on the record. The Bible says every single time, because the Bible has many, many instances where it speaks of a baby in the womb. Jesus, John the Baptist, Jeremiah, David referenced his own pre-birth existence in his mother's womb. Every single time it mentions a baby in the womb, it uses the word human. There was no fetus and baby language. No, 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 not in the Bible. Human in the womb, human outside the womb. The king has spoken. The king has decreed. And he has decreed all over the Bible, do not take the life of of another human, do not murder. You are not getting cells cleaned out, you are murdering a human being. The king has spoken. Now, here's the cool thing, you're no longer ignorant now. So now if you go against the word of the king, you're a rebel. You're a rebel. Well, but my mommy, your mommy didn't die for you. Your mommy didn't breathe life into you. You won't stand before your mommy when you die. Your mommy might not even make heaven for all I know. Well, I don't know. You don't know. But there is a king of kings and a lord of lords that you will answer to. Amen. So, God may be saying to us in different areas of our life where we're confused or we're living outside of the authority and, and he says, Walker, have you not read? Have you not read? The other day on Facebook, it was a while ago, um, but I, I can't remember what it was if I was getting something set up, but you, you click uh, gender, male, female. Do you know for thousands and thousands of years, that was a pretty simple question? It was really distinguishable. In fact, you know, relatives are waiting outside, waiting for the doctor or the nurse. So what is it? What is it? What is it? A boy and a girl. Boy or a girl. All right? And there's a, there's a, there's a way you can tell. This is a family church, so I won't really get into the details, but um, <laughs> it's not a blood test. You don't ask the baby. So do you, how do you feel today? You, you, you feeling kind of masculine? No, it just is a male or female. So, so Facebook had 47 gender options. I bet you it's more today, okay? So has the king spoken? Yeah, in the beginning he made them male and female. Well, but pastor, I, I am confused. Okay, if you are, if you are, the king will help you. The king who designed you, the king, and, and there are people here that love and have compassion, and we're not gonna we're not gonna harm you or hurt you, but we will, with the authoritative word of the king, will help guide you. 
to understand how God created you. And he didn't make a mistake. And he certainly didn't leave it up to you for you to decide. Okay, so ignorance. Another way that people can live outside of God's authority is that we, we disregard God's word in order to hold on to human tradition, what the people have spoken, what the people have decided, okay? So obviously tradition comes from the authority of a person. Matthew 7, sorry, Mark 7, Mark 7, verse 6, um, Jesus is going to quote from Isaiah here. He said to them, well, did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites as it is written? And here's the quote. These people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commands of men. Okay, what do we teach as doctrine? We teach as doctrine word of God. Isaiah said, you, you people are teaching that the commands of men are equal to the word of God. Don't do that. And then Jesus commented on that, and he said, you leave the command of men and hold to the tradition of men. It's been a while, but a number of years ago, uh, somebody... Uh, was, was kept using this phrase and, and kind of seeing that as, as the nation was, was kind of not, uh, there were certain norms or values that weren't being upheld. And, and I, sh I shared, certainly shared their sadness. I've seen that in, in America as well. Uh, but, but they would say this often. They'd said, as a nation, Zambia, uh, we need to get back to God's word and traditional Zambian values. God's word and traditional Zambian values. Please don't use those phrases in the same sentence. They are two entirely different things. They are not equal to each other. Okay? Now, I would agree that you know, my wife and I have seen this in our lifetime. Where, you know, we grew up in America in the 70s, and there are things that have slipped and gone back, and we would say, Ugh, there are certain things that are not better. All right? But... Word of God is word of God. Amen? And Jesus said you can, you can disregard the word of God in order to hold on to something that is, is just considered normal. I'll give you an example. So again, when my wife and I were kids, um, we, 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 we were aware that there were people that were immoral and they were not walking in God's ways as far as, you know, there's fornication and adultery and everything. But it was pretty weird at the time, uh, 50 years ago, that people would cohabitate, that they would live together under the same roof without being married. Live together, have sex together. All right? it, was, it was pretty weird. I mean, that was for hippies. It was for those, you know, people that were, people were like, oh, man, you heard, you heard about those people? Yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy. Even unsafe people, that was not, it, would, it wasn't couth or expected. I'm speaking of the United States right now. Cohabitation is as normal as drinking water. I'm talk when I say everyone, I mean everyone, except really for people who are followers of Jesus or or super duper maybe religious. Everyone, everyone lives together before they get married, or they live together and never get married, but they just live together. All right. And, and I've been to a number of weddings where people who live together for years, now they're getting married. And people are celebrating. And I'm like, what's going on here? They're going on a honeymoon. Honeymoon? They went to Mauritius two years ago. I thought, you know, what's, what's the difference? Okay. So, so the tradition of men has discarded the command of God. Okay, I'm not prophesying, and I, and I hope I'm wrong, but I bet you in 20 years in Zambia, cohabitation in the world will be fairly normal. Be fairly normal. Um, because it, it, it's already happening, and it's in, the, in 20 years we've been here, it's already becoming more normal. 
where there's no shame, where it's just how people, some have decided to live that way, all right? So the word of God does not receive its authority from the endorsement of people. It comes from God's breath. It comes from his own character. And so we understand it, we read it, we apply it, and when it's different than the world, we don't care. We don't care. So 10 commandments, Old Testament, first commandment, you will have no God, we sang it, you'll have no God before me. You won't, you won't bow down to idols. Hebrew children, three guys, young men, get to Babylon. King Nebuchadnezzar says, you're, I'm going to make a statue of myself and you're going to bow down to it and worship. And they say, no. We're not even going to consult with each other. This is a really easy answer, O king. Still saw him as king, but we will not bow down. And the God that we serve, because Nebuchadnezzar says, what God will deliver you? And they said, the God we serve will deliver us. But here's the deal. If he doesn't deliver us, we still won't bow down. It's not about the consequence. And so he went nuts, went crazy, threw him in the fire. And then he said, I thought I, I, thought I put three guys in the fire. Who's the fourth one? When you follow the word of God, Jesus will come into the fire with you. He will not leave you. He will keep you. Amen. Now, another way that sometimes Christians get outside of God's authority from his word is self-will. I decide. I have gone this way. All right? Genesis 3, verse 1. Now, the serpent was more crafty than any beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He, the serpent, said to the woman, talking snakes in the Bible, pretty wild, eh? He said to the woman, did God actually say you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said you will not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden. Neither shall you touch it lest you die. Now God actually didn't say touch it. She was already getting some, some confusion there. Verse four, but the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. God said but I'm telling you something else. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. If you disobey God's word, it's gonna be nice. It's gonna be awesome. Your life will be enhanced. So when the woman saw that the tree was good, it was a delight, it's gonna make her wise. So she saw something, decided something, different than what God said. She decides. Well, Eve is just living her truth, isn't she? Yes, she's living her truth, and she paid a huge price for it. So she ate it, and she gave to her husband, who was with her, and he ate. She didn't tie him down and force it down her throat. He ate. Don't blame the woman. So I decide... I decide, I want it. I'm not interested in God's timetable. He's taking too long. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this work for me. My way. I decide because everyone else is doing it. The crowd is telling me. No, we don't self-decide. We let the king decide. Amen? Amen? He decides. We understand. We follow. Sometimes people feel it's, it's more expedient to go outside of God's ways. Pastor, you don't understand. If I'm going to get this job, I have got to give a brown envelope to the head of HR. That's just how it is. No, no, no. What do you mean how it is? God calls that unjust scales, and he says it's an abomination to me. It's an abomination. So, well, but pastor, I won't get the job. Well, then don't get the job. You'll be alive. You'll be walking, but you'll be alive. It's not the end of the world. That's not disobeying the king. 
And here's the thing about the king. When you go the king's way, the king backs you up. The king stands with you, all right? And then sometimes, lastly, people get outside of God's authority from his word is because they simply don't trust the Lord of lords. They simply don't trust the king of kings. John chapter 5. John chapter 5. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone who loves him is begot and loves him who is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. There it is again. Not surprising it was in John's gospel, now it's in John's epistle. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. See, the devil, the serpent said, listening to God and obeying God will keep you from good. It will keep you from good. The consequences won't happen to you. No, God's ways are not burdensome. It's amazing. It's wonderful. It's good to do your money and your marriage and your kids and your education God's way. That's the good way. That's the highest way. That's the way Jesus said, remember, he said, I came to give you life and that life more abundantly. Or, or the quality of God, quality of God's life. How do you experience it? Well, the kingdom of God is like this. Okay, yeah, God, that, I wasn't really raised that way, but I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go your way. That's the good life. Not burdensome. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. I know at Unza, years ago, I don't know, maybe still, but if you, if you go God's way, in your sexuality, they'll call you a monk. I don't know if they're female monks, what they call the females, I don't know. You just need to get a t-shirt, big red letters, monk for Jesus. Live in the monk life. Amen. God's ways are not burdensome. Are they tough at times? Challenging at times? Oh, for sure they are. But are they good? They are. Because our king is good. Our king is wonderful. Our king is a savior. And he loves us. Amen? All right. Let's, we're going to have a, a, a way to apply this right now. So King Jesus, before he left the earth, in Acts, the first chapter. So Jesus died. He was buried. He was raised from the dead. And then he talked with some before he ascended to his father. And this is that time. And Acts 1, verse 4, And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You have heard from me. So Jesus had much to say about the Holy Spirit while he was still on the earth. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? They're still kind of thinking natural. And he said to them, it's not for you to know the times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but, all right, so I can't give you an expectation about that, but I can give you an expectation of this. Verse 8. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witness to me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Now, all he's doing, he's repeating the great commission that he had already said, but he said, when you do it, you're gonna have power from me. And when you look at the disciples before Acts 2 and Acts, after Acts 2, major difference. God has a plan for your life. God has a purpose for your life. You need to receive power to accomplish it. And thank God for education. Thank God for, for, for good wisdom and, and get all that you can. But there are times in life to fulfill the plan of God and to help people and to lift humanity. You need the power of God on your life. And so the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost. 
And so sometimes churches like us that call us Pentecostal, well, we're still living in that day and age that the Holy Spirit was and is poured out. And, and things began to happen, and people said, man, this is kind of weird. And, and Peter stood up and said, no, 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 it's not weird. This is what Joel prophesied. This is biblical. One of the things that happened in the upper room, they were filled with Holy Spirit. They began to speak in other tongues. It happened multiple times in the book of Acts. Nowhere do we see that God decided to, to stop that or pull the plug or that, that now we're, we're good. We need the power of God today. And if you're a believer, you might be one like in the, in the book of Acts, Acts 19 in Ephesus. Paul got there finding some disciples, he said, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? And they said, we didn't even know there was a Holy Spirit. All right? They had some limited knowledge. He laid his hands on them. They received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. All right? And so today, if you're a believer and you would say, you know what, Pastor, I need the Holy Spirit's power in my life. Um, I see that the, the New Testament repeatedly talks about this prayer of, of praying in other tongues, that my mind is unfruitful, but my spirit prays. I pray the perfect will of God, and it is a wonderful, wonderful thing to have in your life. And, and these people that, were, that God touched in their lives, God began to use them in marvelous ways. God wants to use you in marvelous ways. And so if you say, look, Pastor, Jesus is my king, Jesus is my Lord, well, listen to the, what the Lord said. You need to receive power, Pentecostal power in your life because it's his will for you, all right? So just bow your head right now. We're just gonna pray. And if you're here today and you say, Pastor, I do, I, I love Jesus. He is my Lord and my king. But I've never been baptized with the Holy Spirit as, as Jesus talked about I've never had that endowment of power upon my life where uh, God uses me in supernatural ways, but I, I would like to see that happen. I'd like to be able to pray to God in a, in a language that I don't know, but my spirit knows and God knows. If that's you, if that's you, and maybe there was a time in your life where you, where you sought this, but you felt like, well, nothing really happened. Well, today is your day. Today is your day. And if you say, Pastor, that's me. I'd like to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. I want to have this Acts chapter 1, Acts chapter 2 experience in my life. If that's you, simply raise up your hand. Say, that's me. That's me. Thank you, ma'am. God bless you. Thank you, ma'am. God bless you. Wonderful. Thank you over here, sir. It says, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Thank you, ma'am. Anybody else? Just lift up your hand. Just wave it at me. If that's you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, sir. Wonderful. There in the back. Yes, thank you, ma'am. Wonderful. Praise God. Praise God. Let's all stand to our feet. Let's all stand to our feet. You said, Pastor, that's me. I'm born again, but I want to receive this book of Acts experience that Jesus talked about and that I see others experiencing in his word. This is a biblical experience. Just come up. I want to pray with you right now. Just come up. Be bold. Let's give these folks a hand clap as they're coming. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Wonderful Jesus, wonderful Jesus. I wholeheartedly, I wholeheartedly agree with the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul said, I would that you all speak in other tongues. That's in the Bible, and I agree with it. That is, that is God's way, and it's, his, it's goodness for you. All right. Wonderful Jesus. Now, here's what, here's what we're going to do is, I don't know if you've ever had this sense. I've, I've, I've heard people say this. Sometimes they, they're afraid. They're afraid. What's going to happen? Or sometimes people say, you, you, you ask for this and you might get a demon. All right? Well, Jesus said this. He said, you know, you, you have a, probably have a natural father or parent, or somebody that's looked after you, and if you ask them for fish, would they give you a black mamba? No. If you asked them for a piece of bread, would they give you a stone, something that would hurt you? No. And he said, in, in, in Luke's account, he says, if you ask the Father for the Holy Spirit, 
He will give the Holy Spirit to those who ask. Ask. So you, I think you've come to ask, right? So just lift up your hand right now. Just lift up your hand and pray this prayer. Father, I thank you that you have promises in your word. I see people living out those promises in the New Testament that you've used their life. But Lord, you said in the last days that you would use sons and daughters, old people, young people, someone just like me, that your spirit would be upon their life, that they would prophesy. And Father, it's my desire that you use me supernaturally. Thank you right now, Jesus. Baptize me in the Holy Ghost. Thank you that I'll be filled to overflowing. Thank you, Father, that when hands are laid upon me, I will speak in other tongues. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm asking according to your word, according to your will, and I thank you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, everybody look at me real quick. I'm going to lay my hands on you. And in the Bible, in Acts chapter 2, 4, it says, when the Holy Spirit came upon them, real important, it says, they began to speak in other tongues. All right? Meaning, it was from another source other than your mind. All right? They began. All right? So when I lay hands on you, you need to begin to speak. It means you have to open your mouth. All right? It means you can't speak in English. It means you can't speak in Bemba, Nyanja, whatever languages you know. All right? Just begin by faith because this is what, the, what God has promised you. Just begin to speak out in another tongue. All right? It'll, it'll come from, from not, a, not a, a source of language that you know. Amen? The Bible says your mind is unfruitful. So, so don't look to your mind for the words. Look to the Holy Spirit. You ready? All right? Just lift up your hands. Don't, don't pray. But as hands are laid on you, just go ahead and begin to speak in other tongues. In Jesus' name, be filled with the Holy Ghost. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Be filled in Jesus' name. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Just go ahead and speak out. Just be loud. It's okay. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah, right there, my brother. Yeah, that's it. Just go ahead and praise him. Just begin to pray and be filled in Jesus' name, young man. Be filled in Jesus' name. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Be filled. Be filled. Yeah, 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 don't stop, don't stop, just pray. In Jesus' name, be filled with the Holy Ghost. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, be filled. Be filled to overflowing. Be filled, be filled in Jesus' name. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah, just go, that's my, that's my right, sister. Just go ahead and just praise him, right? Just from, from your belly. Yeah, 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 just out loud. It's okay. Yeah, that's it. Wonderful, wonderful. Jesus name be filled be filled be filled in Jesus name be filled in Jesus name begin to speak begin to speak that's it yeah in Jesus name be filled be filled in Jesus name now just go ahead and praise him in this other language just go ahead and pray to him oh the Bible says you give thanks well you give thanks well when you pray in the spirit yeah oh thank you Lord Congregation, if you speak in other tongues, if you praise God in other tongues, just praise, just begin to thank Him in other tongues along with these. Father, we thank you. Oh, we praise you. Oh, yes, young man. Oh, thank you, Lord. Using this young servant. Oh, Lord, use him and fill him. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we love you, Lord. You're so good. You're so kind. You're so kind. Hallelujah. Just be bold. Nobody's, nobody's taking pictures. Nobody's taking a video. Just go ahead. Yeah, sweetie. Just go ahead. Just, oh yeah, just thank him right now. Just thank him in other tongues. Uh-huh. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, isn't he good? Sister, isn't he good? Yes, he's good. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, all of you that, that came forward right now, oh, I'm so, so, I can just see so, so many of you just filled and praying in other tongues right now. But here's what we want you to do. We want to want to show you some things in the Bible. We want to give you a book because this is not an experience at Miracle Life. This is in the Bible. 
want you to see it and understand that. Maybe you've got some questions, all right? And they're people that really love you and care, and they're just going to help you walk along, along these paths. Which way are we going? We're going this way. If you would follow Mary here, Sister Mary, we're going to go to a place of prayer. If you just follow me this way, all right, to your right. Thank you so much. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's just lift up our hands. Father, we love you. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. Father, we thank you that your word is alive today. Father, we thank you that today in 2024, we are still a New Testament church. You're still writing the book of Acts, Father. And we thank you for using these, these men, these women, these young people, Father, in marvelous ways, Father, that their life will never, ever be the same as a result of today, Father, that this will mark them in Jesus' name. With every head bowed, every eye closed. But you're in this place and you say, Pastor, when you talk about Jesus being Lord, when you talk about Jesus being King, I have to admit, he's not. Not in my life. I know about him, but I've not bowed the knee of my life. I've not submitted to him and to his word and his ways, but I want to. I'm tired of running. I'm tired of being a rebel. I want to follow Jesus. Friend, you can. You can. If you are a prodigal son, a prodigal daughter, come home. Come home to a father and live under his authority. Live under his roof. The bright lights of the world will not help you. They're going to leave you more broken than you are today. Come home to your father. And if you're here today and you say, Pastor, that's me. I want Jesus to be my Lord. I want him to be my Savior. Wherever you are in this auditorium, simply lift up your hand. Simply lift up your hand. Prodigal son, prodigal daughter coming home. Thank you. God bless you, ma'am. Anyone at all, thank you there in the back. Thank you, young man. Oh, we love you, Lord. Anyone else over here? Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Anyone else? That's me. I want to follow Jesus. I'm tired of running. I want to follow him. All right, if you lifted up your hand, or you're thinking now, I should have lifted up my hand, just grab your Bible, handbag, whatever you came to church, just come and meet me up front. Just come and meet me up front. We're going to pray together. Jesus is going to become your Lord. Jesus is going to have his rulership over your life, and everything changes today. Let's give these folks a big hand clap as they're coming. Over here, over here. Thank you. Just come. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, young man. Thank you for your decision. God bless you. Anyone else before we pray? Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for responding to the Holy Spirit. Wonderful. Come, come, come. You can come. All right. Why don't we just lift up one of our hands to heaven and let's say this prayer from our hearts. Say, God, Thank you for sending Jesus, your own son, to die for me. He was killed on a cross, but you raised him from the dead. Jesus, I believe in you. You are the risen Savior. Forgive me. Wash me of every sin. You are Lord over my life. You are the king that I follow. Your word is my guide, and I follow you and you alone till the day I die. Thank you, Jesus, for bringing me into your family. In your name I pray, amen, amen, amen. Thank you. Would you just follow Mwenda here? We're going to go to a place of prayer. We'd like to give you a book. Thank you so, so much. Congregation, if you have a need in your life, then there is a, a God in heaven who loves you and cares for you. The Bible says we have exceedingly great and precious promises. And so our care team is up front and they're gonna pray with you, pray for you. Whatever you're facing, you don't have to face it alone and God can help you, all right? So when we're dismissed and we go out, please feel free to come forward because we know that God has a good plan and a good path for whatever you're facing in life. Amen? Father, we love you so much. Thank you for your word. 
Thank you for the great and mighty Holy Spirit who leads us and guides us, who gives us grace to follow you. And Father, we accept your Lordship that we live as those under, under your authority, under the word of God. And what a good, wonderful, safe, and precious place to be. And we remain there. Thank you, Lord. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Have an awesome, awesome day. We love you so much. You're dismissed, and we're going to just dismiss you from the back to the front. God bless.